In the olden days of yore, if you wanted to play PC games, you needed a big clunky computer to do it. Something that took up a bunch of space on your desk or your floor. It was loud, probably ugly. But these days, there are many, many ways we can get our PC game fixed without resorting to dealing with motherboards and case fans and RBG. Now we have off-the-shelf computer products that give us access to PC games that are simple, small, and ready to rock. Yeah, they don't have the same performance as high-end desktop PCs, but they're cheaper. And if they're strong enough to play all of our older games, indie games, AAA games, and emulation, then that's probably going to be enough for most people, I think. But one thing that I think doesn't get talked about much is, if worms don't have eyes, how do they see? Do boy worms just assume the girl worm they're hooking up with is super hot? With a big sexy uh, tuber tubercula pubertatus? <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, I guess. But another thing that doesn't get talked about often is how a handheld PC compares to a mini PC in terms of bang for the buck performance. It's something that I'm always curious about. Whenever I'm reviewing a mini PC, I'm thinking, should you just get a handheld instead? And when I'm reviewing a handheld PC, I'm thinking, should you just get a mini PC for this price? And when I'm looking at pictures of hot worm girls, I'm thinking, you know what? It's a probably better they don't have eyes. Leaves more to the imagination. So today we're going to answer that once and for all. The mini PC versus the handheld PC thing. The worm thing will remain one of life's great mysteries. I, I don't think there's really going to be much of a contest, to be honest. Mini PCs are not as power constrained as handheld PCs because they don't need to worry about the battery. So maybe the extra performance boost you'll get from a mini PC that doesn't have to waste its budget on a tiny screen and built-in controls would be worth it if you're playing in dock mode more often than not. But only if it's actually that much better, right? How much better would it need to be? How on this earth filled with sexy worms do we even go about solving this dilemma? Well, I'll tell you how. That's right, it's time for a PC Gaming Doodad Smackdown. 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 In this corner, we have the white tiger of the handheld PC world. A portable powerhouse that doesn't pull punches. The slick, the slim, ROG ally. And in this corner, it's small but savage and gray. Gray like blood. Gray blood. The tiny titan of multitasking and gaming, it's the B-Link Sir 8 Mini PC. And in this corner, we have two worms getting it on. Let's give them some privacy, shall we? Today, we're here to pit these two gaming gladiators against each other in a fight to the death. Only one will come out on top. Which one will it be? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that in the intro. Watch the video! That's what you're here for, right? Smackdown! 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 I wanted to pick some devices that were the exact same price. B-Link sent me this Sur 8 mini PC to, to show you guys, so thanks for that, B-Link. There's a link to the this in the description below if you want to pick one up. This is their new Sur 8. It's sort of like the budget version, the one without any AI cores, which is totally fine for me because I don't need some AI judging my browser history and laughing at my terrible gaming skills with all his AI friends. This actually retails for $4.99 on Amazon, which is a pretty great price for a mini PC of this performance, as you'll see. So I need to pick a handheld PC that is that same price. I have lots of handheld PCs, but the one that makes the most sense to compare is the ROG Ally. Not the Ally X, that one is quite a bit more expensive, but the original Ally. The Ally is $4.99 on sale right now from Best Buy, so it's not quite an apples to apples comparison. The Ally is usually $649. However, I think considering that the Ally has a screen and a built-in controller, that would be an extra $150 or so bucks to get some comparable peripherals for the mini PC. So I think this is still a fair comparison. However, for $4.99, we get some very different device specifications. The ROG Ally is powered by the Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor with integrated Radeon 780M GPU. It has 16 gigabytes of LPDDDDR5 on board, clocked at 6400 mega things per second. Also, we get 512 gigabytes of NVMe internal storage, along with Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and because it's a handheld, we get a 40 watt hour battery. And there's a screen and controls and stuff, but we're not here to compare that stuff. We are here for the guts of these things. Speaking of which, the guts of the Sur 8 are quite a bit more gutsy than the Ally. 
This thing is powered by the Ryzen 7 8745HS processor. And also here we have integrated Radeon 780M graphics. So these machines have the same GPU and we'll see how important that is in a bit. However, on the Sur 8, we get 32 gigabytes of RAM clocked at 5,600 mega things per second. So it's a little bit slower RAM, but it's double the RAM and also double the storage. One terabyte of internal storage on this model. We also get the same Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 6, and no battery, obviously. So in terms of the specs, the Sur 8 is gonna come out ahead, but specs aren't everything. They're not cars, they're not vegetables, they're not worms making sweet love, and they're not benchmarks. So let's do the benchmark thing. Starting off with Cinebench R23, on the Sur 8 we got a single core score of 1702 and a multi-core score of 16,239. Very impressive processing power from a mini PC there. And the ROG Ally did w worse. It managed 1146 single core and 12,229 multi-score. Cinebench scores reflect processing performance for desktop stuff, not gaming. So it, it's not a huge deal that they're different, but it is interesting, isn't it? No. No, it's not. Next up, we have 3D Mark Time Spy, which is more representative of gaming performance. The Sur 8 Mini PC was able to get an overall score of 3355, while the ROG Ally got 3234. Not that much different. That is interesting. I wonder if that's a sign of what's to come for the game benchmarks. We shall see. Yes, we will. And finally, I tested the SSD. The Sur 8 Mini PC got a max read of 5196 and a max write of 4753, while the ROG Ally got a max read of 5309 and a max write of 1820. So the Sur 8 has significantly faster storage, which again, isn't surprising, but this does affect gaming in terms of load time, so I figured I'll do the tests because I don't want to get yelled at. But benchmarks are benchmarks. They're good for comparing benchmark stuff, but they're not games, are they? No, no, I, I don't think they are. And we are here to figure out which of these doodads is better for games, so let's do that. All of these games are being played with the same settings and resolutions across both devices. The ROG Ally is being played docked with 30 watt turbo mode enabled, so keep in mind that the handheld performance will probably be a bit less in handheld mode, or quite a bit less if you're trying to save battery life and playing at lower TDPs. That's not the goal today though, today we're going to just push it as far as we can in docked mode. Both PCs are running Windows 11 using Steam Big Picture mode as the launcher and front end. Let's start as always with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here I am running at the medium preset at 1080p native resolution. Starting with the ROG Ally, we got 38 FPS like this. And the game is absolutely playable and enjoyable. Ideally on the Ally, because of the variable refresh rate screen, you would want the FPS up above 50 FPS, so you'd obviously want to lower some game settings to achieve that. Some games I need high FPS and some games I don't, and this one I find as long as I'm above like 40 FPS, I, ca I can play this and be happy. However, let's see how the Sur 8 did. This is the same settings, medium settings, 1080p, and here we did pull out ahead, but, but not by much actually. We got 42 FPS on average. That's not as high of a jump in performance as I was expecting, to be honest, especially considering how drastic the benchmark performance was. And th that just goes to show you that the benchmarks are only one tiny part of the picture. I think if you were doing more productivity focused stuff, the Sur 8 would be the obvious choice, but we're here for gaming and in terms of this game, these PCs are not too far apart. The Sur 8 will take the win, but only just barely. Next up here is good old Red Dead Redemption 2. This game looks so dang good, but it does run great on a, a, a wide variety of hardware. I wouldn't say it's running great on the ROG Ally, but it, it's fine. We're at 1080p with the first balanced settings profile that allowed for high texture quality. However, I went with balanced FSR to give us a boost. This is running at 37 FPS here, and to be honest, I, I was expecting more. But th that's because I'm used to playing this in handheld mode. When I'm holding the Ally in my hands playing this, it feels smoother than it does when I'm playing docked, but that's more of my like bias towards wanting docked gaming to feel like a higher FPS, I guess. But yeah, the game plays well and it looks good, so that's good. I always test this game when I'm working on mini PCs and it always surprises me at how well it runs on these things. This is no exception. It's running great here on the Sur 8. 
I got 48 FPS like this. That's quite a bit more than the ROG Ally and you could definitely feel it. That 10 FPS difference is enough to make it feel a lot more responsive and just fun. This is a game that I like a higher FPS and uh, that it's a big difference compared to the Ally. Now, to be fair, on the Ally, I'd probably end up lowering some of the settings to get the FPS higher. But in an apples to apples comparison, yeah, the mini PC comes out pretty far ahead in this game. Moving along to some Doom Eternal. <laughs> this game is so well optimized. It runs so well on a, a ton of hardware configurations. Here I'm running at 1080p native with the medium graphical preset and the ROG Ally was performing really well. 59 FPS here on the Ally, like this. That's a really nice way to play. I know we're here for dock mode stuff, but I need to mention that since the Ally has a variable refresh rate screen, this is plenty of FPS for that to kick in. So it would feel even smoother in handheld mode, but even in dock mode, this is still great. The mini PC did pull out ahead. We got 67 FPS on the Sur 8, but to be honest, it didn't really feel that much different. A 10-ish FPS difference can feel like a huge difference when you're at a lower frame rate, but up here in the 60 FPS range, it doesn't feel like as much of a difference. It is different though. The game did feel smoother and more responsive on the Sur 8, just, uh, just not the night and day difference that I kind of expected to get. But that's why we make videos like this, right? I wanted to include at least one new game, so I went with Black Myth Wukong. I kind of bailed on this game. <laughs> I got stuck at this one boss and I just got bored of trying to get good and beat him. I don't know, maybe I'll come back to it, but I'm feeling like this one might not be for me. I'm definitely the outlier though. This was the Steam Awards Game of the Year, so most people love it. I'm just a weirdo, as usual. Here I'm running at 1080p with the low preset, but with the medium shadows, and I have FSR set to 66%, and frame generation is on, because this is definitely the kind of game where I notice a low FPS and it bothers me. Starting with the Ally, there it wasn't great at the start. There was some major stuttering issues on my first run. However, I gave it another chance and the stutters were mostly gone on the second run. So obviously some weird shader stuff going on there and, and it ended up getting cleared up. And we ended up getting 52 FPS on average, but there was some big dips below that. Now, this game is totally playable, and I assume that the frame generation is doing lots of the heavy lifting here, but I did enjoy playing it on the Ally regardless. It didn't feel as good as the Sur 8, but still really good. On the Sur 8 with the same settings and stuff, we got 64 FPS on average, and the game felt great here. I know frame generation gets some hate, and I, I think in some games it's not even worth using, but in this game I like it, and I'm happy it's there. This feels great, and the, the game looks great, to be honest. It doesn't make me any better at the game, but at least it looks pretty, and it, it plays pretty. And when it comes to emulation, to, to right off the start, neither of these devices is going to be ideal for PS3 or Xbox 360 or beyond. PS3 wasn't really good on either device. Here I'm running Red Dead, which is one of the hardest games, to be fair. Easier games might work better, but it was a nightmare on the Ally. With missing texture streaming issues and then a completely unplayable frame rate, it was better on the Sur 8, it didn't really have the same texture streaming issues, and in-game it was more playable, but it still wasn't perfect. But for most emulation tasks, they both will perform great. But it's kind of tricky to judge performance, because with emulation you're not trying to get super high FPS targets. Usually you need to hit 30 or 60 FPS depending on the game, and the games don't go beyond their intended frame rate. So for emulation benchmark comparisons, it's more about seeing how high you can upscale something before you take a performance hit. That's the best way to compare devices. So I chose to go with GameCube. This is Mario Kart Double Dash on the latest version of Dolphin, Vulcan Backend. On the ROG Ally, I was able to upscale to 8x native resolution, which is 4224p, well beyond the 3168p of 4K. And on the Sur 8 Mini PC, I was able to go up one step beyond that to 9x resolution, which is 4752p. Not that you would ever really need to do that, but this is how we compare them. And uh, that kind of means that in practical use, there's not much difference between these experiences, at least in GameCube, and it should be similar for most emulation tasks. However, if there are games that are just barely not playable on the Ally, I think we can expect the Sur 8 to handle more of those. I say go for the Sur 8 for emulation over the Ally, but neither of them is going to be perfect uh, for the highest end stuff. So where does that leave us? I think it should be clear that the Sur 8 is the better device in terms of performance, but how much better is it actually? Well, according to my calculations, the Sur 8 came out 
53% ahead in the benchmarks. For gaming, it came out 19% ahead, and for emulation, it came out 12% ahead, which means that, yeah, the Sur 8 takes the win. Congratulations. Yay! Yay! However, the difference in gaming wasn't as much as I was expecting. The ROG Ally ultimately had decently close performance to the Sur 8 in most games. And of course, the Ally can be used in handheld mode, while the Sur 8 can't. However, however, keep in mind that the Ally is getting a performance bump because it's plugged in and running at the 30 watt turbo mode. So while I feel like the Ally isn't all that far off from the Sur 8, in practice, there's a lot more to the picture depending on how it's going to be used. However, 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 I need to mention that the Sur 8 isn't just better at gaming. It's a better overall computer. It's made to sit on the desk. It has lots of ports, lots of USB-C holes, USB-A holes, HDMI and DisplayPort and Ethernet holes. If you're doing actual computer stuff, the 16 thread processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of fast storage that we get in the Sur 8 will make it much better for productivity work like Photoshop or video editing or just even general Windows usage. And as a computer, it's a delight. It's small and attractive and it's just about the most quiet and pleasant mini PC that I've ever used. It's just a, a great computer. I love B-Link stuff. Every time I go to check out one of their mini, mini PCs, I always end up loving it. But we're not here for computer stuff. We're here to talk about the mating habits of earthworms and for gaming. And the big conclusion is that worms have super low standards and also the Sur 8 takes the win. Not by a huge crazy amount, but if I was picking between these for PC gaming horsepower, I'd go with the mini PC. Let's be real. Yeah, the Ally has the ability to use it as a handheld, but lots of things can do lots of stuff. And if you're not going to do that stuff a lot, then don't get it for that stuff. That's a, a bit of uh, tech dweeb wisdom for you right there. And that brings us to the end. Let me know your favorite worm comma sutra position in the comments below. If you want this mini PC or the ROG Ally, I'll have links to where you can buy them down there too. Click the thumbs up button if you like the video or don't if you didn't. That's it from me. I'm tech dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.